Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It is super helpful. I've invited several super cool YouTubers onto my channel today to talk about their favorite ColecoVision game of all time. This is the 40th anniversary of the ColecoVision. Yes, 2022 marks the 40th anniversary. Can't believe it. I did get mine back in 82 when I was just 15 years old. And man, this makes me feel old. But it's a reason to celebrate. I love this console. My favorite game of all time, as some of you know, for the ColecoVision is Ladybug. It's a perfect, near perfect, I should say, arcade port. It's an amazing game. Uh, it sort of takes the whole Pac-Man formula, you know, the dot gobbling maze game and adds some new strategies, such as doors that, that you can maneuver, that you can open close and trap the bad, bad guys. Uh, vegetables in the center of the screen that you can eat. You can eat letters for extra ladybugs and to light up special, which will give you a vegetable garden, like a bonus round. Fantastic game. Um, but I wanted to have some other guys on here talking about ColecoVision. I've talked about ColecoVision until I'm blue in the face. So I wanted to invite some of my friends on here to talk about their favorite game. One word of warning, just a little, uh, Adam Corlett, great guy, good friend of mine, a lot of fun to hang out with. Great YouTube channel, way over 100,000 subscribers. The dude needs to bone up on his ColecoVision, needs to get a ColecoVision and play the heck out of it because apparently it's not much of a thing with him as you will see by his pick as his favorite game, but he's last and certainly least in this video. <laughs> Just giving you a hard time, Adam. Uh, hope you come back to DFW sometime soon so we can hang out. So some of these picks by these YouTubers are gonna surprise you guys. There's a couple of games on here that might not have occurred to you to be among the greatest or favorite ColecoVision titles. So check these out and uh, I'll see you at the end of this video. I'll come in with a little outro for you. What's up everyone, how you doing? My name is John, uh, also known as Gamester81 here in the YouTube gaming community. Brett reached out and asked me what my one of my favorite ColecoVision games is. It's a hard question because I love a lot of ColecoVision games. But the first one that came to my mind was one that's a little bit more obscure because there's a lot of classics, of course, Donkey Kong come to mind and other ones. Um, Turbo is awesome, but Cabbage Patch Kids Adventures in the Park. This game came out for the ColecoVision in 1984. Uh, it was also ported to the MSX. I've seen a ROM of it for the SG-100 for Sega in Japan, so it hit those markets. There was a prototype that was released for it for the Atari 2600. This has been released now in the community, which is awesome. But of course, the one I grew up playing was the one for the ColecoVision because that's the one that was available in North America. This game plays very much like Pitfall. It's a really fun game. Uh, basically, it was ColecoVision's hopes. This was released after the video game crash from 1983. And one of Coleco's main brands, of course, was Cabbage Patch Kids, right? And they wanted to kind of combine the two. It's, this game was developed by Konami. And graphically, musically, it's a really fun game. Controls are tight. Uh, you jump on lily pads, you jump on, you swing on vines. You, uh, there's different platforms you gotta jump through. Very challenging game. Definitely want to check out for the ColecoVision if you don't have one already. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Brian from Brian's Man Cave. So Brett asked me what my favorite ColecoVision game was. Um, and I, I thought about it, I was like, uh, that, that's a tough one. I mean, there's a lot of great games on the ColecoVision. I didn't actually grow up with a ColecoVision myself. I had an Intellivision and I had the Commodore 64. Uh, but I did have friends that had a ColecoVision. And so I did get to play a few games during those days. And of course, you know, the first two games that, that really came to mind, like, you know, obviously is, is Donkey Kong. I mean, classic on that system. They sold it with Donkey Kong. Brilliant move. Um, one of the better platformer uh, games of the day. And actually, you know, one of the better versions of Donkey Kong back in the day. But that's not my choice. And, and neither is you know, Donkey Kong Jr., which is still a great choice, still a great game. But the one game that I really thought of when I think of ColecoVision is Smurf at, well, is it Smurf Rescue in Gargamel's Castle? Um, this game, I remember seeing it. I remember actually playing it at a friend's house, and I was really kind of blown away by, you know, the the scrolling effect, that the, the idea that you look like one of the Smurfs. Uh, like it actually looked like the cartoon to me. I, I was like, wow, that that's really cool. Now the gameplay itself is not too complex. I mean, it is 
a scrolling game and you you, you got to get used to the the ColecoVision controller when you're playing it you see i had my intellivision so i was a little bit more used to the to the feel of the buttons and stuff but even still uh this game you know it, it doesn't have uh, it's not like the complexity that you would expect from say donkey kong or anything like that i mean you're just walking through a little forest you're jumping over fences you really don't get many enemies until you've completed the game a few times now one of the things is though uh, it's kind of like a little disappointment of it is at the very end of the level uh, where you save smurfette uh, there's no villain there's nobody to it there's nothing you would expect at least gargamel to be there uh, but there's just a little skull sitting in there in the in the corner um, really your your biggest challenge with this game is is controlling the smurf and not dying not jumping on the wrong thing or not hitting something wrong uh, the wrong way and dying uh, so really it's just controlling the game is, is what it comes down to and then you just literally jump up you save smurfette then you go back to the beginning and then these crazy bird things come flying at you and the game kind of amps up from there. Um, they did make a version of it for the Atari 2600 as well, which I didn't play until much later on. I didn't even know it existed. Um, and then when I finally got to play it, at, at first I wasn't expecting much, but when I put it in, I was like, wow, um, they actually did a pretty good job on this one too. But yeah, so that's my choice for uh, my favorite uh, ColecoVision game. I know it's a simple one, but it was a, always a fun one for me. Now, our ColecoVision was an Atom computer with the ColecoVision adapter. My brother found it at a yard sale, uh, and it was during a time where we already had the NES for about a year or two. Uh, but even when we had the NES, I still had my Atari games, and then I had uh, a ColecoVision, which I've never had a ColecoVision before. So it gave me an opportunity to check out some of the great ColecoVision games, including Donkey Kong, even though Donkey Kong's on the other side of the screen, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, but the game I played the most was a game called Miner 2049er. Um, is starting, what was that guy's name? Bountiful Bill? Bountiful Bob? Something like that? Why do I still remember that? <laughs> it made an impression on me, apparently. Uh, what can I tell you about it? It was kind of like a weird hybrid cross. Had a little bit of Donkey Kong, where you had to, like, you know, climb up the ladders and everything. A little bit of Jumpman, Jumpman Jr., where it just gave you, like, a stage to play with. Um, even a little bit of, maybe not so much Pac-Man. Um, but you could pick up items where the enemies would then turn blue and that's where you could defeat the enemies So maybe a little bit of that too and maybe a little bit of like city connection or something like that or Amagon from back in the arcade days um, Where you have to I mean the idea is you have your your screen your static screen and the more you walk on these platforms It fills them in and when you fill in all the platforms you move on to the next stage so a simple in complex design uh, however, just a, a lot of fun playing it. I could never get too far when I was younger. I'd love to, I mean, I haven't played this game in probably 20 years. I should check it out again soon. Uh, but when it comes to my favorite game for the ColecoVision, the very first game I thought of, um, I only had a few games, like five or six games or something like that. Uh, but the very first game I thought of, I went straight to Minor 2049er. It just, it stood out to me more than, more than the others. Hey guys, Papa Pete, the old guy gamer here. Thanks a lot, Brett, for having me on to talk about my favorite ColecoVision game. Uh, of the three big systems, Atari and Television and ColecoVision back pre-crash, like 1982, 83, uh, ColecoVision was probably the one that I had the least experience with. I had an Atari 2600 myself. My brother-in-law, who lived close by to me, had the Intellivision, which I've absolutely developed a huge love for the Intellivision system. But actually, my other sister and her family in Bangor, Maine, had a ColecoVision system, which when they were looking to buy a system for their family i might have leaned them sort of in that direction because i hadn't played that one i really wanted the opportunity and believe me i did play it a lot when i was a kid and my favorite game back in those days we played most of the arcade games was ladybug and i'll tell you why i like ladybug so much I'm not that i was such a huge pac-man fan because we know that this is a, a pac-man clone but this game here uh, was just so much fun and it actually was well loved by everybody in the family so i have a lot of great memories of playing this game with my young nieces with my sister with my brother-in-law up in bangor maine many many moons ago uh actually the original ColecoVision system that we went and purchased one friday night in bangor back in 1982 uh is still in possession of my niece uh, my oldest niece right in brooklyn new york so 
I'm really uh, happy to see games like that be carried on through families, just like I have my brother-in-law's television system, and I still have the original Atari 2600 when I was a kid sitting right there. My new needs to be repaired. But anyway, Brett, uh, Ladybug, great maze game, so much fun. Uh, the premise, I mean, everybody is a premise for the whole family with uh, Ladybug trying to save the vegetables and collect the vegetables in, in the farm, I guess, or in the garden. So, uh, piggybacked onto the Pac-Man craze with all the different maze games, but at the end of the day, it was just a lot of fun. Uh, the music was great, the sound was great, and it brings back some great family memories. Anyway, guys, I'm Papa Pete, the old guy gamer. Thanks again, Brett, for having me on, and my favorite ColecoVision game, Ladybug. Hey, Brett, thanks for having me on the show, and what a great question. My favorite ColecoVision game of all time. I gotta tell you, the first one that pops in my mind is that Smurfs video game, mostly because I remember fondly that my whole family was crowded around the television set playing the game, and I remember looking over at my grandmother, who was playing the game with a giant smile on her face, and that was one of the first key moments in my life where I realized the emotional impact that video games could have on everyone, not just me, not just my friends who were all addicted to playing stuff on Atari 2600 and Coleco and uh, some of us had in television, and I had a Vectrex as well. Uh, and that Vectrex, actually, it's back there. It's right back there. Um, but it was a really profound moment for me, and I'll always remember the giant beaming smile that my grandmother had as she played that game, which looked like, uh, you know, you were playing a cartoon at the time. It looks pretty, uh, you know, dated now and simplistic now, but it was pretty incredible back then. I also loved a crazy shooter called Space Fury, and I remember that uh, Cyclops alien that would come up after you'd finished your mission and it was really hard and complex and, um, and tough on you, but you had a lot of fun with it. I really enjoyed that one. Um, and I, I loved Minor 2049er. I loved Jumpman Jr. I liked Ladybug and Mr. Do. But I think the thing that really drew me to the ColecoVision was the idea that the games that you could play on this platform were very close to arcade perfect. And that was something that was the holy grail back then because I used to buy the Atari 2600 cartridges and they looked incredible on the box and they had some pretty cool box art on the back and you know all of this wonderful illustration. And I remember these games, these ports of these arcade games on the 2600, and then you pop in the cartridge, and it'd be like, oh man, what a letdown. <laughs> this doesn't look anything like the arcade game. But when you threw in Donkey Kong or Donkey Kong Jr. into the ColecoVision, it looked really close to what you could play in the arcade, and it blew my freaking mind. And yes, you know, right then and there, I thought to myself, the ColecoVision is way better than the Atari 2600, and we're taking some massive, massive leaps here with this new technology. And of course, it was short-lived, but I do have some fond, fond memories of the ColecoVision. It was a pretty killer home console in its day. The Immortal John Hancock here, and I definitely have my favorite ColecoVision games, and one that's been growing on me, one I've been playing a lot more recently, is Jumpman Jr. Now this is a fantastic, I would say kind of like Donkey Kong style game. Um, it is so much fun. It's very challenging. There's several screens. I do believe there's 12 screens. And this is not the only port of it, but I think this is the best port. There's two other uh, versions of this game, one on Atari 8-bit and Commodore 64. But I really like what they did on the ColecoVision. This port came later in 84 and this is one that I you know found out about way later after this had been out several years you know I really got to play and enjoy ColecoVision after its heyday you know when I started really retro gaming uh, in the in the early 90s I really discovered and found this game and since then I've, I've really just enjoyed playing it there's there's so much so many things that can kill you. I like the animations when you die, but this is a fantastic little uh, game where you're going around collecting things, and and you know the, the, it's got a high score, and it's so challenging. But I think if you give this one a try, you know it gets overlooked by other arcade classics. I do believe on the ColecoVision because the ColecoVision actually had a pretty strong library, but I really have enjoyed this one, and I keep going back to it. I think it's great and it's well worth a look. Hi everyone, my name is Adam Korlick. I'm a YouTuber and Brett Weiss asked me to be part of this video. I'm currently in Gallows Bay, St. Croix, US Virgin Islands. 
Uh, and for some reason, Brett wanted me to talk about my favorite ColecoVision game. And I straight up told him, I don't think I have one because it's really before my time. You know, I, I only kind of retroactively had an Atari 2600. And that was my first console, but it was only after it was way, way old. So I've got memories of that. But ColecoVision, I, I think I own Star Wars Arcade. I guess we'll go with that. And you're sitting there going, that's not a good game. I know, but that's all I got. So why is this clip in the video? That's Brett, he's the one who put it in, not me. I didn't do it, I, I was giving you an honest answer. But look, water, and uh, there's, a, there's a fort back there, Fort Christianstead, from when the Danish used to own this. ColecoVision. All right guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments what is your favorite ColecoVision game of all time, and let me know what you thought of the guest YouTubers picks. I appreciate you guys watching. Subscribe to all these channels. I will put links to their YouTube in the description here. Very likely you're already subscribed to some of them. All right guys, thanks again for watching. Happy 40th anniversary to the ColecoVision this year. And um, here's hoping for, you know, I hang around long enough to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the console. All right guys, talk to you later. See you in another video. If you're a fan of my work, you might want to consider supporting me on Patreon. For just a low fee each month, you get a lot of extra content. Another way to support the channel and my writing career is to buy books direct from me, including the 100 Greatest Console Video Games, the Classic Home Video Game Series, it's like an encyclopedia set, and this massive bad boy, the NES Omnibus Volume 1 A through L. I will put links in the description of this video where you can buy books direct from me and where you can support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. ColecoVision.